ask your Holy Spirit to be, a mouth, to be my mouthpiece, to be in control in everything I do and everything I said. Lord, we come humbling ourselves to you, Lord. We just ask you, Lord God, to anoint my voice, anoint these words, O oh God, as I, as I proclaim your goodness, Lord God, that we may know you personally, Lord God. Your son, the one who died for us on the cross of Calvary. Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What I'm speaking tonight is about how to know God personally. That is the greatest thing we can have, to know him. Every day of our lives, whether you lay down, you sleep, you rise up, that his presence is with you. I got a question in here. What does it take to begin a relationship with God? Devote yourself to unselfish religious deeds or become a better person so that God will accept you. You may be surprised that none of these things will work, but God has made it very clear in the Bible that how we can know him. The first one is God loves you and offers a wonderful plan for your life. The Bible said God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son whosoever Believe in Him will not perish but have eternal life. The best thing we can have that eternal life when we leave this earth because when we die, this is the last time. There is no turning back. There is no turning. Coming back to this earth, it's done, it's over. That's why God sent His Son and gave us a chance to know Him more and to love Him more. And God's plan says in the scriptures, God, Jesus is speaking that I came that they may have life and that may have abundantly. Why is it that most people are not experiencing abundant life? I know you can answer that to yourself. Why other people don't have abundant life? First of all, they don't have relationship with Jesus Christ. Second of all, they don't believe that he is the son of God, the Messiah who died on a cross for all of us, for our sin. And also, they rejected him because they don't believe that he came as a human being on this earth. And they rejected the one who gave us life and ransomed us. And he paid the price that we could not pay. He paid the price that he didn't even owe. And the second thing is that all of us sin and our sin has separated us from God. When we sin, it's so hard for, for us. When we pray to God, it's hard that, we can, that our prayer will be answered right away because we are separated from Him. And our answer has been so like God is not hearing us because we rejected Him. We don't believe in Him. The Bible says that... Uh, all have sinned and fall short for the glory of God. We are created to have fellowship with God. But because of our, our stubborn will, self-will, we choose to go our own independent way. And fellowship with God was, a, was broken. This self-will characterized by an, an attitude of active rebellion or passive indifference. It's evidence of what the Bible calls us. He said... We are separated because the Bible says the wage of sin is death. It's spiritual separation from God. That's in Romans 6.23. When we continue sinning, you know, our life is not really continuing. That We're, gonna ha we're not going to have any abundant life because God will let you choose where you want to walk. You want to walk to this world because the Bible said we cannot serve two masters. You will love the one and you will reject the other one. Who are you going to choose? You want to know God personally in your life? You want to live more abundantly? And the third one is that Jesus Christ is, is only God's only provision for our sin. 
Through him we can know and experience God's love and plan for our lives. The Bible says that he died in our place. He demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He rose from the dead. He died and rose from the dead. He was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. He appeared to Peter, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 people. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one can come to the Father but through me. We got to go to Jesus first. If you think that, that uh, your salvation, you can earn it without knowing Jesus Christ, you're wrong because Jesus is the only way. The Bible said he is the door, the door gate. He is the bread of life. He is a good shepherd. John 6 says that, but don't be concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. When we go to Jesus Christ, his son, he can approve it if, if, to his father, whatever we ask from him. But if we will not ask him, he cannot ask to his father because we are going to Jesus. Jesus is the way to the father. He will approve everything we ask of him. In verse 28 in John 6, he said, they replied, we want to perform God's works too. What should we do? Jesus answered them. He said, this is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. God sent his only son that we may believe on him. But so many times, even now, so many people rejected him. They don't believe the son of God. They rather believe in those uh, Muslim, those Buddha. I know I, there, there's a person that I know that I went to their house, and here there's a big figurine of Buddha. And then she was feeding that Buddha, that golden Buddha, with pretzel. I said, what are you doing? And they're feeding, that's their ceremony that they were feeding the Buddha. They pray to Buddha. I had to walk out that house because... I don't want to get any spirit in that house. But I believe, because there are so many things that people, they, they bow on the, on the ground, they worship Muhammad. They, they didn't even believe. They believe in other prophets. But you know what? Jesus is the only way for, uh, for us to go to heaven, to have eternal life. The Bible said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never get hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. When, when Jesus said in here in John 6, 39, he said, And this is the will of God that I should not lose even one of all those who has given me, but that I should raise them up at the last day. Jesus asked his father to give his children to him. And he asked him, and the father gave him the approval, and because he wants us to be with him, to share his kingdom. What a greatest thing that we can, we can have when we share his kingdom, heaven. We're going to experience everything what Jesus has promised us you know, in his word, in the Bible. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. The, those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely, and I will find good pasture. In here, he was talking about he is the gate for the sheep. We are the sheep of the pasture. And said, we can go in and out without any problem. Because we know who is the shepherd. We know who is the, uh, 
the one who's a doorkeeper. Jesus is a doorkeeper. When he, remember in Noah's day, when he told Noah to build an ark and bring all this animal two by two, when it's done, to close the door because God is going to put that flood on the earth. And here when the door is locked, a bunch of people are crying, asking them to open the door. And the door has been locked and they cannot open it anymore. So they drown on that flood. Because of the sin they did against God's face. And here he said, Look, I stand at the door and I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice, open the door and I will come in and we will share a meal together as a friend. That is a good thing that Jesus stands. He is a friend, stick closer than a brother. You know, we can have a friend. Sometimes it's for temporarily, and sometimes we have a friend, they can bite us behind the back like snakes. They will stab us behind the back. But you know, Jesus said he promised to us that he is a friend. He is the lover <coughs> of our soul. He is the husband to the widow. What else we can ask for? He is everything in our lives. He said he's a good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrificed his life for the sheep. When he sacrificed himself, people beat him up. He put a thorn, a thorn in his head, pound of nails in his hand, whip him, and mock him. But he still, he said, Father, forgive them. Forgive them, for they didn't know not what they do. He sacrificed himself for us on the cross of Calvary. See, when it says in here, when he is a good shepherd, he know the voice. The shepherd know the voice of the sheep, and the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. They listen, and they run. But if you don't know the shepherd, how can you run to, to him? Jesus doesn't know that you are his sheep. Maybe you will be a goat. Because someday the Lord will separate the goat from the sheep. The sh sheep will be on his right hand and the goat is on the left hand. And then this goat is going to be doomed to hell where belong because they rejected the one who died on the cross for us. Jesus said, just as my father knows me and I know the father, so I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I, I have other sheep too that are not in, in this sheepfold. I must bring them also. There are so many sheep on this earth. They are lost. God wants us to reach out the lost soul that they can bring it to him to be his sheep. And number four, we must individually receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Then we can know and experience God's love and plan for our lives. And we must receive Christ. As many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, even to those who believe in his name. Do you believe in the name of Jesus? Some of you are watching by the YouTube or Facebook. I challenge you tonight. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to make a decision tonight because the Bible said today is the day of salvation. Your light might not be here this hour. You might be sleeping in there all of a sudden. You're gone. It's too late if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because we are all going to stand before the judgment day. The angels is holding that book. If your name is written down in the Lamb Book of Life, you will spend etern eternity in heaven. But if your name did not find in the Lamb Book of Life, the angels will take you 
to other place where there's gnashing and teeth, where weeping and crying, there is no turning back. So my people, tonight, you need to make a decision. You may have a good job. Maybe you're depending on your job because you're making a lot of money. Maybe you got a good savings account that you don't need God anymore. You're fool. Jesus said, you are fool. I'm sorry to tell you that, but Jesus said that in his word. Don't depend on your riches. Because that will be gone like a, the wind will blow it away. The best thing you can have, your riches, is your eternal life, your salvation. Spend, spending time regularly in the Word and in prayer is an important step toward having the close connection of, with God that you can crave. But keep in mind that the, to cultivate the strong bonds in any relationship, we must get to know what the other person is like in which things matter to him or her. It takes time and deliberate effort to understand someone else's thoughts and motivations. So tell the Lord that you long for closeness with Him. Ask Him. You want to be close with Him. You want to have relationship with Him as a father, as a, as a best friend, as a lover of your soul. And you can begin your time in prayer and scriptures reading. Be sure to ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten your thoughts and your insights. He will show us things about ourselves that we'd rather not see. He will reveal sin so we can cooperate with him while he rooted out all that junk in our lives. Lots of time I always said, Lord, search my heart. If there is something in me that is not pleasing to you, I want you to root him out, pull it down. Destroy it, that you can build, that you can put something good in my life, that you can use me for your kingdom, for your glory. This is in here, uh, you can go to church regularly, serve a board and, and sing to a choir, yet not really know the Lord. So many times I ask people, do you have relationship, do you know Jesus? Yeah, I know Jesus. Do you know God? Yeah, I know God. I said, the devil knows also God. The devil knows Jesus. That's why they tremble when they speak. So re you have to have relationship with Jesus Christ. Knowing Jesus is different. Knowing God is different than having relation with him, relationship with him. It's like a husband and a wife. It's like a, a mother and a father. That is relationship. But knowing it's easy. To truly know someone, you must spend time with them sharing and opening your heart. See, when we, when we have relationship with Jesus Christ, we can open up our heart to him. We can talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes you don't think that you are, you can, he can hear you, but you know what? The Lord knows your thoughts. He can read your email. He, can, he knows where do you live, where you live. He knows when you lay down and you rise up. He knows what is in your top, in your heart. That's why we need to communicate with him maybe day and night. The Bible says he made known his ways to Moses. Israel knows God acts because they were observer, whereas Moses knew his ways because he was intimate with him. Moses has intimate with God, and God knows him well. And he knows his heart. He knows his thoughts. He submits to God. Whenever God speaks to Moses, he listens, and he do it. How about Peter? Let's go talk about Peter. Three times Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes, Lord. 
The first two times, Peter answered yes. And the third time, he got frustrated by a question. He answered, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. It's easy to say, yes, Lord, I love you. But sometimes you got, you got unforgiveness inside your heart. You got bitterness against brothers or sisters. You got anger. How can you say you love Jesus when all those things is hidden inside of you? You didn't want to even release it and let it go. Let it go, everything that is not of God, and go forward where God will take you. Because God can use you in a place where you don't even know that you can be used by God. He's a great God. He's an awesome God. You can fool others and even yourself, but the Lord knows the quality of your love for Him. Sometimes I ask myself, Lord, do you love me? I lay in bed, I ask Him a lot. I want to go forward. I want to go on with you. I just want to go beyond what I am now. I want to be used for your kingdom. Take me. Use me. No matter what you want me to do, I will go, Lord. Yes, Lord, I will go. I remember when um, Jeremiah, he didn't even know how to speak. And the Lord said to him, Jeremiah, I will use you. I will put my words into your mouth and you will speak. You will speak to the nation. Don't say you're a young kid, young boy. God is no respecter of person. You can be a person that there's no schooling. You don't know nothing. God used those people who don't know anything. They didn't even graduate in high school or nothing. But God knows also what's in your heart. God knows your heart. That's why God uses those people that, that are innocent people. Those that are obedient to him. Those that, are, that, that love the Lord. Would you, would you want to be used by God? Do you know really Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you want to have a relationship with Him? Today, His desire is to draw you closer to Himself. He's asking you, are you available? I want to use you if you are available. It's not how many, you know, how many hours you work and stuff. But God is looking for availability. God is looking for willingness. I want to sh share something in here. I want to read something in here about Jesus. I lost my John. Okay. About the shepherd and the sheep. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, the person who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in some other way is a thief and robber. The one who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The one who guard the door opens it for him. When you enter to the door gate where Jesus is, he's the one who's going to open the door for you. You will enter in that gate where he's at, prepared for you. And the sheep listen to his voice Listen to the voice of the shepherd. He called his own sheep by name and leads them out. See, God 
knows who you are. And he, he knows everyone. He calls them by name. Whether you are sinners, whether you are Christian, he knows your name. Don't put yourself down because God loves you. Jesus loves you and he died for you on the cross of Calvary. Don't reject him because he is giving you time to repent of all your sin. If you do that, God can change your life. Move on. Forget everything that is behind you. Go forward. The Bible in here said he goes, he goes ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they don't know his voice. Jesus told the people this story, but they did not understand what it meant. How many times Jesus speak in parable in the Bible? People doesn't understand it. People doesn't even recognize. People, I hear people saying, oh, it's, this only man, they wrote that Bible. It's not God. God uses everybody who are, whose heart is after his own heart. This is, when we read this word, his word, we are speaking to him, we are talking to him, we are communicating with him. So people, tonight, tonight is your night if you just give your heart to Jesus. He will not turn his back away from you. He will receive you as a children. It's like a prodigal son who were lost, but now he was found. Jesus bring back those people that would like to come to him. Would you like to come to him tonight? You gotta ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. Tell him that you have sinned. Tell him that you repent of all the sin that you have did you have done. Ask him to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, and he will. God is no respecter of person. He loves you, and he adores you. There is nothing too hard for God. If you want some miracles in your life, the Lord is the only one who can do miracles in you. If you believe, this is the word, believe, believe that he can do all things. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, I thank you and I praise you. As your word goes forward, oh God, I pray that even one or two people, oh God, will come to know Jesus Christ. That they will call this church, Jesus, Jesus is Lord ministry. Lord, that they will commit their lives to you, Lord. That their lives will be changed. Father, I praise you and thank you, Father God, for that person. And that you will do a miracle into their lives. No matter what. The storms of life. And Lord that they are going through Lord. You can calm the storms Lord. Into their lives. You can soothe the pain. That they have been feeling Lord God. That you will heal the broken heart. Those people that have been broken heart. There are so many people from the church that have been broken. God, heal them, Lord. Give them a new beginning. Restore everything what the canker worms have stolen. Give them a breakthrough, oh God. Restoration, breakthrough, healing in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you the praise and honor and glory for who you are. For there is none like you. There is none like you. We love you, Lord. We praise you and magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.